Thank you so very much, Claudia, and thank you everyone at TREE, and uh, thanks to, to Bruce Taylor for his wonderful, wonderful words on, on the chat book and for picking it, and thank you very much to everyone for being here. Uh, I'm delighted to be reading with the, uh, the Hot Ottawa Voices as well. As a Hot Ottawa Voice alumnus from 2011, uh, there's a certain continuity or a synchronicity of, about this. And uh, speaking of continuity, um, Claudia has already mentioned the, the two previous winners and the two winning chapbooks. Uh, neither David or Mary Lee can, can be here tonight, but their chapbooks are over there. And uh, David has generously donated his copies to anyone who cares to make a don donation to Tree. So uh, please pick one up. It's a, it's a good book. Um, with your indulgence, I'm going to begin with a poem that's not in the chat book. Uh, it's uh, still in progress, but it gives uh, some context for the chat book and why I picked the, the amazing cover image, which you might want to look at at the break. Um, when assembling the chat book from my mass of published and unpublished poems, more unpublished than published, uh, I was looking for a common thread, something that, that, would, that ran through it. And uh, I noticed that there were a number of threads uh, that picked up uh, liminal spaces, uh, hovering places uh, betwixt and between, imbalances, uh, thresholds, portals. And uh, so having last fall been to Ireland, I couldn't think of a more portentous portal than uh, the entrance to Newgrange, which is a Neolithic burial mound uh, built with incredible alignment to the winter solstice. 11 minutes uh, at solstice, the sun penetrates to the, the interior of this mound. Uh, so with that, I will read Passage Tomb. Newgrange's great glaring wall, like Knossos, is a colorized surmise, a facade as in fiction, to rein in, tame that chambered Neolithic hush. Knot of visitors untangles as we thread ourselves through the passage, tracing the root of the share shine, shoulders and hips brushing stone. Oldest daughter turns back, sudden claustrophobe, feels the ancient weight of gray whack press in. A limping Brit who'd visited as a youth engages the guide beneath the corbelled ceiling vault. How much has changed, he marvels. Few were interred in this tomb, honored bones with their grave goods, the highest award, to be washed by the still chillness of a winter's dawn. Quartz pebbles on modern graves evoke the sun path, the fire tide, quench of light that yearly floods the parched passage, fills basin stones. And I should mention that some of those words are from uh, Seamus Heaney's uh, poem about, about Newgrange as well. So bit of a pastiche. So turning to, uh, to Portal Stones, the chapbook, I'm just going to, uh, to read a few poems through, throughout, pretty much in the order that, uh, that they appear. And um, probably won't say a lot about them, but uh, starting off um, with The Fox, which has an epigraph from Rumi. When we have totally surrendered to that beauty, we shall be a mighty kindness. This morning, I saw a fox sprint acro across a sweep of lawn by the lake. My dog, rooting out smells in the fallen leaves, ignored it, a pared down shucked shell moment and a squeaking open. Once I expected to walk, th to step through a door like that into green hills and unclouded horizons, I thought arrival, I thought forever. I still catch myself believing a switch will, f will flip and I'll become a peeled shrimp of the self. But what crucible or frying pan, what marinade would make me? I will not set, I can't stay gelled. The moment never stays, bright blue gasps of sky, light glinting off glasses of red wine, the silky pull of lake water as my hands move me through it. Staying with water for a minute, tumble and silt, 
to dream in colors wave washed in jewel tones blinking its eyelashes as it comes towards the shore ah 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 and churn and gather pebbles roll them and tumble and silt the impossibly silvered sediment into glitter on the surface and barrel roll and foam at the mouth build and gash hard against the shore then dissipate sorry and strewn the soft soak into sand those sculpted angles patted carved remainders of the suff of withdrawal rattle of regret does the one wave remember its charge towards shore as it sighs back into the busy bath of ocean sinking into kraken thoughts shipwreck notions deep reef silences and meldings merging subsurface soundings of depths and current, ocean kettles, boils, the waves heave its mad defectors dash. <clears throat> After the funeral, while my sister and her friends drink wine, toast mum's photo and laugh, giddy on anecdotes and on just being together again, my dad, my brother, and I retreat to the TV room. Dad in the lazy boy, his large hands arranging the afghan over lifted legs crossed at the knee. His arms settling on the old recliner's arms. Peter and I look to him, eyes red-rimmed, can't look at each other. Dad erect with that old dignity despite the details and days eluding him. So, clears his throat. What shall we do now? We can only shrug, both of us dry-mouthed, wearied by the day, the week it has been. Shall we sing, says Dad? Trickster smile, tweaking his cheek beneath his dark-framed glasses. In our unsure silence, he begins, old man, river voice, rumbling in him like Robeson's. The heat is up, the way he likes it, the room close. Me with those two large men on plaid furniture just keep rolling along. Chameleon, keep speech wadded tight in your palm or slip it into the zippered pouch inside the lining of your pocket. Pat it there on the sly. What veils the voice? What fabric muffles noise? I tangle in the stuff, shapeless now or shape shifting through cotton or slipping through satin. The wickle of wind, the faint rustle of grass blades, I, chameleon, move. Is my name lizard or something more antique? Husk in back of throat tries that name, a whisper down corridor. Breath moves air in front of my mouth, but no bellows resound in my chest. I crack open my ribs, wear my lungs for wings, rise, and watch myself shudder back into shed skin. Where is that wad of secret voice? I churn the placid air, struggle to right myself, no easy somersault, but breathless, wordless, nameless stasis. The source hunkers, tamped to its core, the name smolders. Blueprint, which has an epigraph from Sue Goyette's of the crows that follow me. Sue says of her own father, if I've learned anything from him, it's the architecture of isolation. Christmas Eve, a call as we clear dinner dishes, a boy on the phone presuming I'd go out with him, family time or no. Mum and Dad exchanged, how could she, looks. But I implored, it was important. I needed just an hour away. I told him I'd be ready at 8. 9 o'clock, 9.30. No engine sound outside, no second phone call. Dad said, let's go for a drive. Let's look at the lights. Such artificial brightness, but I had no choice. A prideful lump filled my chest, sob lodged in my throat. I wouldn't cry, not yet. Frigid night, but the blue valiant was warm inside. No wind, scrunch of tires. I slumped, muffled in my mother's outmoded mouton coat, appropriated as hippie attire. 
and buried my chin in the long, heathered orange scarf I'd knitted for myself. Dad stared straight ahead, one arm and shoulder, guiding the wheel. Streetlights made blue shadows on high snowbanks. I let my eyes blur through the gap, my breath warmed in the window frost. Through tunnels of road, we passed houses strung with red, blue, yellow, green. Turning down the radio, he told me what he'd learned from his drinking days. Friends are flimsy buttresses. They tumble away. That family's firm foundation is the one thing sure and solid. I stayed snow blind to his cozy renderings, yearned for larger rooms. I can only now admit I'd been too shy, embarrassed to say into the phone, who's calling? Hoped it was that guy I'd kissed on another snowy night the week before. Voice murmuring down the line, do you know who this is? And I, terrified of mistakes, replied, of course I do. On that silent drive, my father's stalwart bulk beside me, the Christmas light shining flat in their four colors, I balked at the structure he'd built with Mum, his certainty I'd need nothing more. A shaky railing all I could find to grip as I flailed for some foothold mid-air. And another one from, I'm not quite sure where, The Fur of Shadow. The woods, time clipped, yellowing, deepening, a votive offering, how the dark proffers a clutch of moments, a bouquet, a nest, how music can fill hands to overflowing. Lovely light ripened by the fur of shadow, what wide reaches you have, the better to swallow you up, the better to lose yourself, follow birdsong, the trills through underbrush, in the loam-scented, sap-leaking, pine-needle carpeted silence, a silence awash with sound. The thicket is an envelope, the single sheet of you slips inside. Those shadows, the pelt you shrug into, while bars of sunlight stripe you blind. And I be began uh, reading from the chapbook with my dog, who isn't here tonight, so I'll <laughs> close with my dog again. Dogwood. Pine Hill is shivering under the thin hospital flannel of snow. The dog bounds, black basting stitches on the white, as we counterclockwise round the park. Boulder toes protrude. Knuckles of rough deadfall clutch the raveled edges. The coverlet is crumbed with maple keys, twigs, flat blackened pods like outsized peas. Cold air silent as the space between breaths. Hectic limbs of dogwood reach up to the standing pines. My dog stands foursquare, watchful for my signal. Is the walk ended? Instead, I let slip the stitches, return the way we came. Our path bends back, junction marked by a fallen aspen, lying wrenched and twisted <coughs> over on itself, open to its broken, spiraled core. Thank you very much. Thank you.